So yeah, let me tell you a bit about the Alien Arms track. So first of all, um, I started making music as Alien Arms during lockdown because I stopped commuting to London. I had some more time. Um, and uh, so I made some music. I wanted to play live. I spoke to Toby Cole, who I think probably a bunch of you know. He's an electronic musician in Brighton, done a bunch of gigs, and said, where should I play live? It's on 55. Yeah. And yes. he said, uh, he basically said, well, you've got two choices. You either go and play the Spirit of Gravity, or you've got to stay up till one in the morning and play at the club. And I was like, all right, sold. I'll go and talk to the Spirit of Gravity people. <laughs> I didn't know people were giving that. <laughs> <laughs> so I went along, uh, I went along, had a great time, uh, and then sent some music to Jeff, and then ended up playing the Spirit of Gravity, kind of in the middle of COVID. So I think the first time I played the Spirit of Gravity, I was the only remaining person on the bill who hadn't had to cancel due to COVID. There were a bunch of yes. amazing people who stepped <laughs> in, but yeah. The poster was just like any alarms, no, 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 no. Um, so yeah, that was great. Um, and then, yeah, a little while later, I got involved in the Spirit of Gravity, started helping out doing the videoing uh, at the shows, um, which happened first Thursday of the month mm -hmm. at the Rossi Bar. You should come along if you haven't already. Um, so yeah, I started um, uh, started helping out with the filming, got involved with the collective. Um, and then Jeff talked about doing this compilation for uh, the 21st birthday, which was a year over a year ago now, yeah. I think. And, um, and my first reaction was like, yeah, that sounds great. Uh, my second reaction was, well, has anyone actually sampled Nietzsche and the Spirit of Gravity um, uh, for a track yet? I was thinking they must have done this for 21 years. But uh, mm -hmm. there were lots and lots of tracks called Spirit of Gravity. But as far as anyone knew, there were no tracks that sampled uh, Nietzsche. So I was like, right, okay, went, you know, roughly through the, rummaging through the internet, found a spoken word version of the Spirit of Gravity chapter, uh, listened to it, and it's all about the Spirit of Gravity, which is this force pulling people down, and then Bird Nature, which is this thing that lets people be free and fly and jump and climb and stuff. And uh, so that made me think, you know, made me think, okay, that sounds great. How do I turn that into music? And the, for me, the thing that whenever I make electronic music, the thing that's always trying to to hold me down is the grid. It's always really tempting to like quantize everything to the grid and make it all perfect. Uh, so I was like, right, that, that that's a good um, that's a good spirit of gravity. And then I need something to be bird nature. And that made me think of Ava Dubova, who I played her piano, um, uh, and it's amazing kind of free flowing piano that kind of doesn't have bar lines and doesn't have you know doesn't have you know uh, very strict structure. Uh, so I asked Ava if she wanted to try and make a track, and she said yeah. So I made some bonkers um, drum beats where the drums are kind of on the grid, strictly on the grid, but the grid is constantly changing. So there's always different time signatures, there's loads of different polyrhythms. The grid is trying to change to try and catch the piano. And they start off um, kind of just playfully bouncing off each other, and then the piano and the grid get more and more annoyed with each other, so it turns into this massive battle at the end. So yeah. I hope you enjoy it. This is the track. I'm going to meet my friend. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy uh, the spirit of gravity. The spirit of gravity. with heavy words and words. Deadly 
hostile. Supremely hostile. Originally hostile. He who wishes one day to fly must first learn standing and walking and running and climbing and dancing. One doth not fly into flying. But he who would become light and be a bird must love himself. One must learn to love oneself. learn to love oneself. Thus spake Zarathustra. There you go. That was the Spirit of Gravity, <coughs> um, which uh, which I made with Avery Dubova um, about a year ago now. Um, so yeah, question from from the chat, uh, and please ask anything you like about the album. Um, do we all have a track on the album? We do. Uh, so we're going to hear, yeah, we're going to hear Jeff and Tony and Andrew's tracks uh, later on today. Um, and uh, but but the next track on the album, so side A track two, uh, is by Ensemble One, which is Tom, uh, who's also a member of the collective, but couldn't be here today. So uh, who can tell us about how Tom got involved in the Spirit of Gravity? Um, he again, he he turned up and uh, said he wanted to play. It, it, you know, it's music, although kind of not necessarily as synthesizer based as something as most of what we put on, is um, you know it's very systemsy and kind of composed, um, but with the same kind of elements of improvisation as well. Um, kind of, it's not kind of dissimilar to kind of country Ted Rowe or someone like that, um, and uh, we thought it was great. Um, I asked him down to play. I actually thought, you know, from the recordings again, I thought it was synthesizer and he turned up with his guitar and, and um, some things. So he's amazing, intricate um, loop parts. And uh, um, although if you go and see him live at the moment, 
Tom is actually playing drums. Yeah. And there's uh, another person, I meant to ask Tom who, who it was, who plays guitar, but on the, on the recording, I believe it's just Tom. Yeah, no, I saw, I saw the live relatively recently, maybe, in Brighton, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, Tom was playing drums, and mm-hmm. absolutely incredible drummer. Yeah, yeah um, amazing technical yeah, skill. Yeah, so yeah, you get you have a chance to see Ensemble on One, and there are lots of chances, because they seem to be doing lots of gigs around yeah. Brighton, then, uh, then, then check them out. Um, and yeah, I, I just know Tom from mostly from, from doing the tech at, uh, at Spirit and Gravity Night, and uh, you know, I turn up and just stick the camera on this evening, it takes me about five minutes to be kind of around, turn all the fans up and get all the sound sorted out, and does a really good job. So, um, so yeah, this is, uh, I'm going to have to read this out because it's got quite a complicated title. Uh, so, yeah, the next track is Ensemble One, and the name of the track is GBD1, which I think is Guitar Bass Drums One. Delay Loops, Section F, by Ensemble One. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it.
right, that was Ensemble One. What did everyone think of that? We're just admiring the fade. <laughs> <laughs> fade to yeah. travel. Yeah. Anybody notice that? Um, and just, yeah. He, he's not just playing a, a round part, he's been, they've been doing them in Ensemble One. The, the, the duo have been doing a lot of gigs all around the southeast and further afield. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, great for them. Mm -hmm. It's nice. I think <laughs> some of us at least play out of town. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think last summer he was in a van to Nottingham in, like, the heat, in the middle of the heat wave, which didn't sound uh, <laughs> which didn't sound like a lot of fun, but you know, it was good good that he was getting out of brightness. So uh, yeah, thanks Tom. That was uh, that was great. And if you have any questions about that track, the track before, Twitter Gravity, let us know in the chat we can answer them on the stream. Um, but moving on, the next track is by McLeod, which is Jeff, yep. So Jeff, how did you get involved in Spirit of Gravity? Uh, well, um, my used to work with Tony. He um, used to come along to his night, and um, he and his um, musical partner Nick Luca were putting on called um, the Spirit of Gravity, and they, uh, um, as a duo, will be hearing later on, um, and I did. Um, as a punter a couple of few times and then they expanded the collective or expanded from uh, just a pair of them putting on the night to a collective so I joined along with a bunch of other people who I don't think anyone is uh, really involved no unfortunately not. no no not that, yeah. um, uh, Chris Cook is probably the, the only one that's still in touch with us oh, oh, was, oh, um, fresh on yeah, Lee, 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 well, yeah, yeah, Lee, 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 uh, Caleb, Caleb, Henry Collins, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so sure that was the kind of original CP King crew, yeah, yeah. So, so that's how I became involved in it. I've been making music under the name of Cloud for um, since the early nineties. We used to have big shoots from Coe and Cal Who do you think you are, fucking my cloud? <laughs> and that's my name, yes. Um, so. Uh, yeah, I put, I put out a few kind of techno records under that name, and then um, I moved to put of various things up, and I didn't make music for a long time. But my first involvement with Spirit Gravity was playing records, DJing at the, at the very first all day. I, I did a tribute to something on Scott, and, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. the uh, yeah. electronic musician who kind of started um, playing around with electronics in the 40s, the 50s, and the so I'm mentor to Bob Moog, Moog, brother. And uh, yeah, so, and then, um, I don't know, something happened when I started making music. I'm falling to inflict me on music on people. Oh, it's me, actually, it was well, meeting Chris. Is it? Yeah, it was I first thought you started doing so with Kayla first. Uh, no, I think Chris was first thing. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Kayla? No. No, no, it was Chris. Oh, we right. talked about making music for about two years. Before we did anything, and then now he's moved off back, he's moved off to Wales. So now I'm sort of loose end and started making stuff on the end for the first time in like 30 years. And uh, you know, quite enjoying it. Um, this particular piece is based on an improvised set I did in uh, a Worthing, not one of the uh, noisish, punkish old days at the Sun Arts Club. And um, I uh, had the music, and then I found I had a basic idea for the rhythm and what I wanted to do with it. And I found online a recording of someone I know did an interview with uh, a well known graffiti artist uh, about in the early 2000s. And so I got that and chopped it up. I said, It's um, um, I'm as I'm getting older, I'm finding it difficult to process sound. I can hear everything, but it's getting a bit kind of above me. So I've affected it 
so that um, your impression of the interview is pretty much what I hear when I'm down the pub. Yeah. It's kind of noises, and then when the sound cuts out, you get a kind of fragment of something out of context that might make sense or it might not, and everything else is kind of like in it. It's just kind of a complete match of misunderstanding. <laughs> um, Sounds great. All right, <laughs> let's hear it. I'm just going to turn the microphone off and then we can listen to my cloud.
All right. That was McLeod. And we got one question from the chat, which was, was that Jeff's voice? Uh, no. No, it's uh, uh, a, a graffiti artist um, who uh, is from the West Country. Well-known graffiti artist from the West Country. West, well-known, well-known graffiti artist from the from the West Country. Hey, Answers in chat for a special <laughs> prize. <laughs> All right. So now we're on side two. So thanks for hanging out. Thanks for joining us on the stream. Uh, again, sorry for the problems we had earlier on. Um, so yeah, uh, side B, the first track is by Andrew Greaves. So Andrew, how did you how did you get involved with Square Graffiti? Well, it would have been about 2010. Uh, I was in a I was in a band at the time. Uh, Broken Star, and we did mostly film soundtracks, and we hadn't actually played a gig here at that point. We'd only done live film soundtrack work, so we weren't really sure how it would go. Uh, and it went really well, and we were really encouraged by the fact that there was an audience for people doing stuff that doesn't fit the norm. You know, you, you know, we carved out a, an approach that was our own approach without really thinking about it. Of it as being a gig type situation, you might try to meet an audience, and 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 uh, well, a couple of days later, I I got a call from from Jeff. I think he'd spotted that we'd been doing our own posters, <laughs> and, and so he realised that there was some sort of uh, graphic design ability involved in our approach. <laughs> so so I I, I was brought in uh, to the spirit of gravity. Uh, uh, collective um, to design the posters and, and get involved in that as well. So, and I think actually one of the one of the characteristics of the gravity is I know everybody is a musician, everybody has got a sound maker, a creative, but everybody has also got another skill that they bring to the table. So everybody's got another thing they do. They might. Like, be yeah, sure what it is that I do. Well, <laughs> well people, you do the door, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> but everybody just sort of like, has got something else that they that, that, that's going on for them that's useful for a collective because you need somebody who can maybe write uh, a bit of PR and you need somebody who, who, who knows how to use tech and yeah, things like that. Yeah. And, and, and so we'll, we'll bring that, that aspect along with us. So it's a real thrill to to do the cover. Yeah, this yeah, is this beautiful, beautiful cover. cover. Beautiful cover yeah. by Andrew. I, I, personally, I, I'm a big fan of the back. <laughs> I'm going <gonna, laughs> uh, to take it closer to the camera so you can yeah. get a better look. So the front is actually the poem in, in six parts that was written by Nick. Uh, and we might hear a bit about a bit of later. And then here's the back where beautiful pictures of everyone and uh, a lovely explanation of what we get up to by uh, by Dan. So yeah. This is number five of 75. If you would like one of the 75, then there's still some available on Bandcamp, uh, spiritgravity.bandcamp.com. So yeah, but all this was designed by Andrew, uh, and I just helped out by finding problems in the text mostly uh, <laughs> for, for weeks on end. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I think that's a very important point because, you know, um, I'm, I'm very much public face of the spirit of gravity because I am see it and answer emails. Um, but it really, really is a group effort, and mm -hmm. um, you know, one one person. I, I don't know how one person kind of operation to promote and stuff actually works without going insane because yeah. it's, it's just mm -hmm. loads and loads of stuff to do. Mm -hmm. So um, it, I think it works really well. And it's, I think it's one of the real reasons for the longevity. You know, running a company like this for mm -hmm. twenty two years. Mm -hmm. So. It's not no me feet. No me feet. No, 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 no. So, uh, no. so so this this piece uh, is called Key and it actually returns me a little bit to the film soundtrack thing because in my mind I was doing a, a film soundtrack to a there's a film called The Key. With, it, it's a sort of um, kitchen sink drama with Sophia Loren and the Dowdy housekeeper, if you can imagine. <laughs> That. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Anyway, anyway, that so, uh, and I was trying to get that sort of autumnal atmosphere of a seaside town out of season, and that's 
the melody for all of that. So it's an English film? Yeah. It's an English film with Sophia Loren as a, 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 a landlady, I believe. Um, <laughs> and she holds the key. Right. Uh, and uh, it's quite a strange, offbeat film for her to be in. Anyway, the, the, the music is trying to reflect that sort of melancholy of that, and I was trying to, to reflect a sort of melancholy of of Brighton, maybe when it's not the best. Or... Yeah, like <laughs> this entire summer, yeah. the <laughs> sad autumnal <laughs> summer that we've had in Rome. There, there were some voices on it, and and they are from the spirit of gravity. They are from uh, about must have been about eight years ago. We for about a year we ran an extra night called uh, a Scope. On oh, Scope, yeah. Uh, mm. Where we would do different sorts of projects, and I remember that. That was at the um, Carolina Brunswick park upstairs there, and that evening I was doing a, a, doing a piece that involved like film recording and people chatting and stuff in the bar and things like that. And uh, when I was doing this piece, I was listening back to some old archive recordings, and I just spotted there was a snapshot chat between uh, Dan Powell and uh, uh, Steve. Who we talked about earlier was due to uh, Electro Crash. Just having a, a chat with her was just really geeking out about an effects table. Um, <laughs> I can't believe it. And, <laughs> really? Yeah. That's fair gravity. It, it was, they were talking about how cheap and nasty it was, but they loved it. And, uh, and <laughs> right, so I had to. Uh, and it was one of those things where, I, where there was literally about 30 seconds of it, and I just used it. And I loved it. It's a great thing. Uh, context of the history of the gravity within mm -hmm. the piece of music. Right. <laughs> a word of warning, you have to be careful about giving Andrew bits of dialogue because I I gave Andrew some dialogue for his Rose Hill project with Dan uh, in exchange for a loan of his projector about a year ago and it turned up again at the Spirit of Gravity of the week. So yeah, apparently that's, <laughs> uh, that's just in, in, in Andrew's box of yeah, samples yeah, for, right for perfect <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's listen to the key. Okay, so this one's got the beginning of the track is cut quite hard spot on here, so it may be again a bit silent at the beginning, so don't worry. It does fade in. All right, let me turn the mic off.
think that's going to be one of the things I'm looking at. <laughs> All right, that was Andrew Drews on the key, and uh, I want to ask what what do you used to make that because the synth sounded great. Enough. The my lead synth is a Cork monologue, uh, and it's in. Uh, there's some bits on it which would be uh, a Roland SHO one, which is people who remember the old one oh one, it's a sort of remake of that. And there's bits of loop stuff, which again would be the the monologue loops. Okay. Uh, and and the degenerates of it and loops. That, that, that's a bit about it actually. There's oh there is some live fashion as well. Is that what it was? Yeah. Great. Yeah, I've seen the monologue. I've seen you play the monologue quite a few times. Yeah, yeah, I've just bought another one. Right. <laughs> well, just play one with each hand. Yeah. Well, kind of. <laughs> yeah, just the, the, the monologue you can play some money, you can tune it to the usual scales, which is like a different musical language, but like any language, uh, you need somebody to talk to you in that language. Uh, so I get the other one, I've got two instruments that I can tune to the same. Scars, right, go on. So that we work together. I think there's a there was a new version of the base station which works at different scales as well. So there's a different there's a few different other yeah, scales. Yeah, yeah. You I can maybe yeah. try and combining them with that and do different scales. There's no learning curve involved in it in the same thing. <laughs> so Mel it's on the chat is asking, was it an SH101? She couldn't quite hear because it's a bit. It's hard. an SH01. SH01 with the boutique remake. Okay, so a remake of an SH101, but a boutique yeah. one. So that's important. Yes. <laughs> and not a Behringer clone. No, not yeah. a Behringer clone. We're not going to go. We're not going to go there, Jeff. We were talking about <laughs> that. We were talking about that beforehand. We're not going to get involved in that conversation. But, but for anybody who's wondering, there's no Cassio. No Casio <laughs> on Andrew's track. Yes, that was going to happen on all our uh, records. No Casio involved. Oh, I used Casio. We used the Casio. Uh, yeah, well, was Dan, Casio. Dan yeah. even mentions uh, the McLeod Casio suit on the on the uh, sleeve notes as well. <laughs> no, so you better get the Casio because yeah. otherwise, you know, yeah. Yeah. otherwise we'd sell them corkies. To be fair, it's a CZ. You know, it's, it's a class of Casio. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with the Casio. Probably be a very good knockoff. <laughs> we're, not, we're not talking about Baron we're not, we're not going <laughs> But I'm glad we talked about some synthesizers because it seemed appropriate for the uh, for this evening. Um, oh yeah, also I wanted to say hello to Fizzle who joined the chat. Um, so yeah. Hey Tony. Again, apologies for uh, the problems we had earlier on today. I'm glad that some people have found their way back to the streaming service that we managed to get working. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of uh, the rest of this evening. We've still got two tracks left. The next one is by Tony. So, Tony, how did you get involved in the Spirit Gravity? <laughs> well, I, I didn't get involved in Spirit Gravity. The Spirit of Gravity got involved in me. <laughs> no, well, I mean, there's anybody who's read the front cover will obviously know all about this. So, I'm one of the founders of the Spirit of Gravity with Nick Wilker. Um, this, this probably a long and a short version of the story, but. The short version is we've done a bunch of performance art type things before and we've done a bit of music but then we wanted to do we formed Malevich which is basically was a music project alone and we couldn't get gigs so we put them on um, and we sort of cast around for people to play I and mean, I actually can't remember how we found um, the people like Chris, Cook and um, Multiplex. I can't remember how we actually found them, but we found these other people, put on some gigs. And as Jeff said, the main thing that happened is a little way in, six months a year in, we decided that if we're going to keep this thing going more than a couple of gigs, we had to form a collective. So we got everybody who was currently doing regular gigs because we used to do, I mean the format of it originally was Malavik would play every month and then other people would play but that turned into quite a regular thing as well so Multiplex played like Wax Factor which is kind of fan played quite a lot, um, Multiplex played quite a lot so all these people we got together and we formed a collective to run it and I think that's why as Jeff said that's why it's still going 
But so all you can know I sort of helped to start it. I can't really take credit for it still going on. I mean, Jeff takes most of the credit actually for the last well, no, you, 15 years. Well, you ran it for quite a while, and then um, yeah. for various reasons you, you uh, yeah. took a, um, a step back. And Chris Cook took yeah. it over for quite a while um, to you know, really put on some crappy stuff we put on. Yeah. The kind of some Christina debacle. Yeah. Yeah. Which wasn't this well, fault. That was fault. Um, uh, it was was um, beat by children's school. Yeah. I mean, that sounds like a story we need to hear. <laughs> we can't just we can't just skip over it. Well, yeah. So yeah, so um, Sonia Christina <laughs> was the singer from In Curved Air, a quite well known punk band at the time. Um, we weren't actually allowed to uh, put on any of the promotion yeah. stuff that she was from Curved Air. So it was just Sonia Christina playing. They called the mask. Mask. Yeah. yeah. Was the band and uh, they came down in the middle of the afternoon to the uh, little Marlborough Theatre Marley and spent the whole afternoon covering all of the theatre in white cloth and setting up projectors and things like that. They put out their own kind of 30 channel mixing this, wow. which they brought down to play through a very small theatre's PA. Um, and so the evening started, and as it does, it you know, we you had um. Uh, quite an experimental act starting the evening off, eaten by children. He had a, um, I remember he had a pair of barber's clippers vibrating in the middle of the stage, which was kind of making this really nice noise. And there's some other things going on. Uh, and unknown to us at the time, something he was playing had a, a, a massive DC, DC offset on it, and it melted all the coils in the um, in the loudspeakers of the PA system, literally. There was like you know puddles of copper uh, in the bottom of the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so we did, you know, uh, eaten by children was making a bit of a racket, and we didn't really notice what was happening at the time. And then the middle act was a guitar orchestra, and we all had little amplifiers that we were playing through. Um, there was about ten guitarists, so again we didn't notice PA. And then Sonny Christina and a uh, band got up to play. And um, there was just nothing. So poor old Chris ran around and uh, tried to sort out a, a, a PA, a place of PA, and you know there were, you know, it was quite a long. It's a very long time ago. It weren't, um, and uh, there wasn't the access to mobile phone technology that we have now. We had to physically run around every venue that we we knew someone and try and borrow kit from them. Um, and you know, sadly failed. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but sort of Christine took it very well. They were very nice about it. I mean, you know, <laughs> bearing, bearing in mind, a that they brought all this gear down, probably cost quite a lot of money to get there. Um, she's quite famous. It was actually really nice she about it. Really cool, yeah. She thought it was not a dick. Yeah. yeah, not a dick. Anyway, so that, that's that's one of our failures. But let's let's pass over that. Think about the successes. Mm. So that the, this track actually um, is a kind of reworking of a track that you can still get on the first electrical orbit, say, elliptical orbits compilations on our Bandcamp label, which is a version of the poem on the front of the sleeve, which Nick um, Nick recited for us, and I did some backing for it. And when I was preparing for this compilation and it wasn't around and I was going to try and get to do some new text for it but I couldn't it wasn't around to do that so I basically cut up the text that I had uh, from that and sort of split it up and slowed it down in various ways to create sort of the text and then did a new backing for it. Um, the title refers is it's in there because basically there's a reference in the poem but it also refers back to um, one of Jeff's favourite tracks that we used to play was this sound we were seeing in the old days, which was called Old All Fields. I remember when it said it was All Fields. Um, <laughs> which is a but previous kind of history of spirit of gravity. Yeah. It wasn't as well worked out as this. <laughs> yeah. I can remember this was All Fields. Makes me laugh like a yeah. like drain from there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of a nice reference back to that. But I do like, I mean, I'm sort of very grateful for um, Jim to actually sort of also done the Spirit of Gravity, uh, the Nietzsche quote, because that refers back to another part of the setup 
which was that um, when we were firstly setting up the nights, we sat down with Dan in a pub to organise it. And we were thinking about what it was going to be called. And we were casting around. He had a copy of Alzo's Factor you know, who's in his pocket, flipped through <laughs> and found the chapter Spirit of Gravity. And that's what we were called. I mean, actually, you've looked more into the meaning of it than us, actually, because I've always been sort of a bit kind of, what does it tell you about? It doesn't tell you anything about the night, to be honest. You know, it, 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 you know, it doesn't get to give you any image of anything about what we do. It's just a label. But, and you've looked in more at sort of how that relates to it. But <laughs> I, you know, it's a pretentious really, label. It's, it's a pretentious label. Well, it's yeah. a so pretentious, it's a pretentious, we're a pretentious <laughs> night. It's a pretentious title. Absolutely. Right? That, that's the relevance to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's interesting because I think it might have been James E. who runs the patchwork label in Brighton and yeah. played the Spirit of Gravity. Uh, he was. Yeah, I think I invited him to Spirit Gravity because I met him up, met up with him at the beat thing and he yeah. met him brought him to Spirit of Gravity and he was like, oh, I've heard of the Spirit of Gravity, like Quietus wrote yeah. a thing about Spirit of mm. Gravity. And I think in, maybe it was in that thing, they were talking, that there was a mention of the name yeah. and people putting into, I think it's probably the author, talking about how they saw, oh, Spirit of Gravity, wow, this is going to be interesting. This isn't going to be just all about beats. This is going to be, mm. you know, some like heavy, profound electronic music that's, yeah, uh, okay. you know, got more meaning to it. So, you know, but uh, that was Bobby. It was Bobby that wrote the article okay. who played uh, as part of Far Rainbow. Okay, just the other day. So, yeah, yeah. Robert yeah. Barry. Robert, Robert Barry, Bobby Barry, what's yeah. the Bobby? He's got a lot of names. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. actor, author. That's interesting though, because uh, I think yeah. the, the, the name we were saying is pretentious, but I think actually one of the things that's great about the name and the vibe of the place is that uh, there's, there's a lot of art going on. But it's but this isn't a white room. This is not an academic yeah, yeah. environment. Yeah. It's a sticky floor venue. It's a club night. Yeah. But actually, there's great art going on. People are yeah. not people are not meeting their audience. People are doing exactly what they want to do artistically. So it, it, so it is what you maybe would get in a gallery. Um, yeah. Actually, uh, it's it's it hasn't got that sort of uh, academic vibe to it. It's very much as I say, sticky yeah, yeah. floor. Uh, yeah, with a bar. Yeah, I mean, I I certainly have my eyes open <coughs> when I or ears open when I first started coming to Spirit of Gravity because yeah, exactly, mm. it wasn't what I was expecting. I like you know, mm. it looked like a little venue. I was expecting mm. doing electronic music, but you know, people were being super ambitious and trying yeah. Like, yeah. really interesting stuff, and they weren't just you know trying to do whatever was on the radio. Uh, and uh, you know, it's just really amazing stuff there and splitting the atom as well. Um, I think both of them have been really kind of, I felt they've been really good for me in terms of like you know, challenging me to go, like, well, you know, are you actually yeah. doing as interesting music as you could be doing? Yeah, yeah. well, by these people, um, it's very interesting actually because the in terms of programming, sometimes we get people who send me sounds and they have to say. Do you do anything more experimental? Because like, this, yeah. this is not going to fit. It's too kind of mainstream. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's, it sounds yeah. a bit sort of you yeah. know it, trendier it, than that. Well, yeah, it kind of has to fit in with what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, kind of polished, polished beats. So it's like, you know, wait, it's, it's too polished. We, we like things a bit rougher around the edges. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's interesting what you're saying yeah. about that kind of the way it deals with kind of uh, music as an art. And, Surrounding mm. um, visuals as art as well, because it sort of fits with. I mean, although we didn't theorise when we set it up, um, the the kind of performance art we used to do before the Spirit of Gravity mm. name it was kind of um, was very much based in in kind of the theory of art, but it was very accessible. So a lot of it was based on kind of flux of scripts, mm. but we did street theatre and we did cabaret. And that kind of thing so we always had a kind of we tried to do that link between kind of high art and low art mm. you know things you could really get into and, um, and, in, and enjoy actually and you know mm. and engage with but were sort of actually based on kind of historical art forms and that kind of thing so even though that's not the way we didn't sit down and sort of 
for other tuners and sort of set that up when we <laughs> when we create the split of gravity. But it's interesting that resonance has kept on going. Mm. You know, yeah. that we are actually sort of pushing the boundaries but in a friendly way. You know, it's like I, I think you know the, we we did um, we did think about that. But I mean, you say about this kind of being sort of a, a year or so. In, you know, we did talk about this mm. LP in. 2019, <laughs> when we, yeah, when we met in a pub to say oh, it's a couple of years for our 20th anniversary, <laughs> what should we do? <laughs> so, was about two weeks before lockdown. Yeah, so, yeah, got the okay, right. lockdown. Yeah, yeah, lockdown. Yeah. It was the last job we met for a year. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, one of the ideas that put on the table that day was we're going to have to do get a line the lady cut LP produce. How many tracks can we get on you know, and all that mm. sort of thing? So, um, yeah, it's been a bit long coming. <laughs> so, I mean, the other story I heard from Jeff was that the, because uh, there was an amazing 21st birthday party at Rose Hill. Yeah. Um, mm. was it last year, the year before? Last, last year. year. Yeah, yeah last year. And, uh, you know, that's kind of when I got involved, ended up filming the whole day. Um, and it was, you know, a really great birthday party. And I think you you say, Jeff, afterwards that the plan was to spend all of the spirit of gravity's money on the birthday party, and accidentally those people turned up and paid to get in. <laughs> yeah. So that plan didn't work out. <laughs> so let's make a record instead. Yeah. So yeah, I quite well, like that. Uh, I, I quite like that version of the origin story of the album as well. Because another thing, point I like to make, which is a, a really nice thing about this this album, which fits in with that history, is we've got a nice mix of artists. So it's obviously sort of me. Than Mick, who started it all, but Jeff, who was in very early, Andrew came sort of halfway through, and the rest is sort of people who are who are, who are quite new to it. And it just, um, it's nice that we've got that continuity and we've got new people, and it's all kind of reflected on the album. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a really nice kind of process. I mean, I'd like to have done, I mean, so if everybody, if anybody hasn't checked out the Elliptical Orbits um, compilations on our Bandcamp label, they go even further than that. They've got everybody who has <laughs> ever been involved in Spirit of Gravity on the two compilations, <laughs> plus about two thirds of the people who've ever played in Spirit of Gravity, <laughs> at least more than once anyway. So so I think, and, and that was another nice thing. I mean, I think what makes my heart sing is the fact that people are fond of the Spirit of Gravity. Mm. When we did that process of asking people to contribute tracks to those compilations, which could be 30 tracks long because we did them on the bank camp label. So many people were really pleased to do it and send us nice comments, mm. that mm. kind of thing. You know, it's, it, was, it was really heartwarming. Mm. Mm. So we had everybody from some of the early people like Monster Bobby. Um, people made tracks. Yeah, I think Monster Bobby, Robert Barry, did his first music for seven years for it or something like that. You know, there's always new, really nice things happening. So. Um, one thing that the audience is probably going to have to say is, can you stop celebrating the anniversaries? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's actually, it started with the 20th, uh, we had the 21st birthday. This is the 21st birthday, but in the 22nd year. Yeah. Enough already. Yeah. Again. But it's no. only three years to go. Till 25. Till 25, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd like to start having a bit, you have to have a meet you to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, just, in, just in case another <laughs> pandemic comes by. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's, yeah. Yeah, probably you want to hear the track. Yeah. Well, that was great. No, yeah. Let's hear the track. So, uh, yeah. What was it about again? Yeah. <laughs> it's a cut up of the history of Spirit of Gravity. The imagined and mistaken history. Imagined, imagined, imagined and mistaken history. Seeing into a future, Rambo and Rilke. Seeing into a future, Rambo and Rilke. Seeing into a future. Step right up. Step right up. All fears. All fears. Greed to refrain for more romantic. Greed to refrain for more romantic. Hosting stages on a journey from the bright form the strata of loyalty. Embedded under yellowing words and musty language. Place. We 
Still not jazz at the lift, all the thoughts broken by the continuous bite, waiting for the twist breach towards the cabinet thieves, secret passages can swear under his breath, latest in the death, liquid, the eye expressive, the heart grateful. Instead, said Nietzsche, the mob's agenda, but in this poem, to distinguish from all different eras with themes, Down gave us the booking, Merrill's, we were not folk at the Canadian, we were fields, we were not punk or free but those I do not resemble, the voice soft, the hand eloquent, the eye expressive, the rainbow, the rainbow, the rainbow, something like battery operates, inviting like minds to bring synths, sympathy and fields, we were not folk at the Canadian, formed a strata of loyalty, embedded under two books, broken by the continuous buzz of human cells and algae. which includes lots of lyrics from the poem in six parts, which is on the front of a poem in six parts, which is an album in six parts. Yay. So it all worked out. Um, so I really love this poem, and the thing I always keep, keep coming back to is the end of it. Uh, I mean, it's just like a really nice sentiment, right? It's like, come on, there's loads of music out there. Let's go and find mm. the new stuff. Let's go and find mm. the stuff that hasn't been found before. Let's, uh, let's keep finding fields. Yeah. So, what fields have you found recently? What music have you found recently that you've just been like, wow, this is really new and exciting? Mm -hmm. I've got a couple that I'm, that I'm actually trying to absorb into my music at the moment, which you might have heard a little bit from when I played the other week uh, with, with, with Howard, with, with uh, Screaming Alice. So I've been listening to some music from Congo. Great. Uh, so, there's, there's the famous Kimono number one, but also uh, Lover Lover who, who, and Coco Co. So there's people who make their own instruments out of junk, put uh, 
put contact mics on it and you know, stick them through guitar amps and things like that and it was very distorting and sort of vaguely bell-like distortion sounds. Uh, but very, very good musicians. You've got people who are playing instruments that cost nothing but they're fantastic players and uh, really good, interesting timings that, that relate to working with synthesizer on a sequencer. So that's one of the things I'm sort of trying to look outside of the usual. I suppose try not to be inspired by, by synthesizer music to make synthesizer. Yeah. So, um, and it's, uh, and it's, uh, uh, it's slightly, um, um, I suppose it's, it's got a groggy sound. Great. Tony, what have you found recently? Um, I don't know, it's, it's difficult to know if I could describe mm -hmm. this as a new thing because it sort of harks back in a certain way um, to music I really liked in the 90s. Um, but I've been listening to a lot more of the kind of um, sort of industrial. Um, it's, a, it's a bit like the old hardcore. Um, people like J.K. Flesh and Scorn, with real heavy beats um, yeah. and, and sort of electronics. I just kind of found myself, you know, sort of listening to one and then picking up another one. And so, I mean, one of my favorite albums recently was the one that um, um, Kelly Martin and J.K. Flesh did with More Mother. I can't remember what they're called. <laughs> Down with a Z. We can look it up. Zonal. Later. Zonal. There you go. Zonal. The Zonal album. Uh, More Mother is another one I've been listening to recently, which I was a bit surprised at because I'm, I'm not great on rap, but what she does is not... Well, I'm not a lot of what she does is rap. It's kind of more sort of spoken word poetry. It's really hard stuff. Um, um, it's, she's interesting in a way because, like, um, I read something that she was saying that she really hated it if like, white men came to her concerts. She's like, I think I, I could never go to see her. She's very militant. But her music is fantastic. It's, it's kind of noise rap, if you like. Right. So mm -hmm. the two combined, it's fantastic. He's really heavy beats and her poetry on his own realm. It's fantastic. Check it out. Yeah. Stuff to check out, Jeff. Yeah. So on, on a similar tip, the Bobby Al Simon Grubb album. Um, so uh, Bobby Al's uh, Togolese MC who plays with Simon Al. He's a Swiss based noise guy. They did an amazing album last year and they put on. Uh, Lost property, put them on. I've got the Albert. Oh, yeah, I think that's it. Also, we met Bansha. Yeah. Um, Chris got talking to Bansha. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, we put them on three times since then. Um, and yeah, Bansha, that's fun. People are kind of playing around with noise. Yeah. They're doing kind of mental stuff with it. Um, it's, it's a really nice kind of, you know, you're kind of from a different kind of milieu. A set of preconceptions about what music is mm. and kind of doing that kind of stuff with really abstract sounds, which I suppose is similar thing to what um, Andrew was saying as well, you know, mm. playing with distortion and, mm. and that sort of thing. Um, but also, he's got, he's got a really good sense of time, and I think that helps. So it's not just sound, it's really, it's, it's the sort of it's very abstract sound, but, but the time is fantastic. Mm -hmm. and it shows but it's not obvious. It's, yeah, it's yeah. kind of playing around with the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I've, 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 I've started getting back into guitar music. Because, um, well, the, the pendulum swings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, I, I do that every now and again. I just <laughs> have to listen to a bit of guitar. <laughs> I've been uh, Snake's local band, Snake Tess and Oh, right, yeah. I <laughs> yeah, love them. Um, it's really. Entertaining life, they're just a really unlikely looking to a, a very, very straight looking preppy guy in slacks and a polo shirt, an <laughs> awful haircut, and a gurning bass player with a vest and gold shaded and gold tooth. Right, <laughs> a really great live performance, and a, quite, actually, quite an interesting thing because it's um, of our sick guitar music, it's bass guitar, and, um, and uh, they have a live drummer. Kind of a backing track of, kind of 
base, more base noises, cracking stuff. Lots of energy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, so yeah. the, the, the fields that I found when I started making music again and sort of got involved in the spirit of gravity was, um, was actually shown to me by a friend of mine, uh, Chris Collis, who is in, an incredible drummer. Uh, he's, in the, he's a drummer in a pretty big math rock band called TTMG, just found these guns. Uh, he's now drumming in a band called Dead Bird, doing more kind of like emo stuff. Um, but he also does loads of stuff on electronics. He's got a pretty enormous, um, you know, modular synth um, mm -hmm. in his place in Hope. So, um, you know, I went around there for a jam and he kind of showed me all the stuff that he was doing. And the interesting thing about it was like nearly all it's modular was about making sequences and patterns. It wasn't really about making sound. It's about taking sequences and mashing up sequences and generating mm -hmm. sequences. And uh, that was something I hadn't really played around with much. Um, and basically what I did with, with Alien Arms, I went, kind of went back home and rebuilt a lot of his modular in software. And then that's what creates a lot of the, you know, the crazy rhythms in, mm. in Alien Arms. It's not the thing that really helped me is instead of having to like program rhythms on, on a grid, I could just go, all right, computer, go nuts, show me what you got. And it would just like spew out you know, half an hour of insane rhythms. And then I could go through and go, yeah, like that bit, like, like that bit, 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 and piece it all together. So that was definitely the the field I found when I started doing alien art stuff. And then from that, one of the things I've got into is polygons, because you know, computers, mm -hmm. you know, polygons are really hard to play as a human being. They're really easy to understand, really hard to play. I mean, Tom uh, from Ensemble One, incredible playing polygons on the drums, but like, that's really hard to get human beings to do. But, a computer can count to five just as easily as it can count to four. Oh, so yeah, yeah. count to five in this bar, count to seven in that bar, then it's like, yeah, sure, whatever, mm. it's just as easy as yeah. anything else. It creates incredibly interesting rhythms for people. It's really easy to do on a computer. So I've been doing more of that, and that was on the, the Spirit of Gravity song. And then, but uh, it's interesting you mentioned Danker, Jeff, because I think he's been definitely one of the most inspiring people I've seen yeah, yeah. recently. I mean, he played in Brighton three times. Um, and then I ended up having a chat where he played with him quite a long time after he played his set at um, the Prince Albert. And, you know, we were talking about how I enjoyed what he was doing and like, how, you know, what, what's he up to and stuff. And, um, you know, we talked a lot about how he was a bass player for years mm -hmm. and then yeah. wanted to make music without using bass, like bass guitar or bass synthesizers. So although his music is incredibly bass heavy, he tries to make it without making a bass line. And instead what he does is he'll use a kick drum and then he'll stretch it and twist it and mm -hmm. he'll turn it into a snare and he'll turn it into a hi-hat he'll turn it into he'll pitch it up and down so it will start playing a bit of a bass line but he's not starting with a bass guitar which is the obvious thing to do mm -hmm. um so i've really got into that and like one of the tracks um uh, on the android Fiend album was very inspired by Danker. the drum beat is just a kick drum mm -hmm. that is automated in mm -hmm twisted and squished in different ways all the way through the track. Mm. And then obviously the other field I found recently is AI, where yeah, yeah, at Christmas yeah. <laughs> at Christmas everyone started playing with Chat GPT and I was like, right, okay, let's make some music, maybe some chord sequences, write me some lyrics. And then I just got went super deep into that uh, that uh, rabbit hole part because I was unwell over Christmas. So I was sort of stuck inside with just a bunch of AI to keep me company while everyone <laughs> else was at like Christmas parties. So, uh, so yeah, I, you know, we've got super into that. Um, and I think there's a lot, I think there's more mileage to be done in the AI stuff, but also I think I kind of want to break from it and want to make some music with, uh, with yeah. more human beings for a bit. But, uh, but yeah, definitely the generative stuff, polyrhythms and, and AI and things that I've found uh, uh, recently. And, it's been great to just find new, just whole new chunks of things to make music out of. Um, mm -hmm. That uh, you know, I've definitely you know previously got stuck in a rut making music, but so it's really cool to find find new things that it's like wow, maybe we could try some stuff with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good. And I think one of the nice things about doing stuff with computers and electronics is you can do that quite. You can experiment with stuff quite quickly. Mm -hmm. You go like, is this a thing that's interesting? And do I want to do anything with it? And so, like, polyrhythms are a really good example. Like, you can go, like, okay, polyrhythms, that's kind of interesting. If you actually want to try doing stuff with it, you have to, like, reprogram your brain to, like, count in fives and sevens and nines and whatnot. Mm. 
But you, you do percussion, you do present percussion stuff, don't you? Yeah, but so that's all, uh, like, most of that is still 16s. There's like dribblers, but mm -hmm. most of it's like 16s. It's like very syncopated, but there's not huge amounts of body rhythms going on. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, in order to drum like Tom, that takes hours and hours of practice. Mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah, what yeah. you want to do is go, oh, poly rhythms, that seems interesting. Let's get a few to do it. Yeah, the program it in, doesn't take very long. Try it out. Is this good? Is this something I want to play around with more? I find the sort of that making music with electronics and computers, the, the sort of cycle time between having an idea about something that might be interesting and trying it out is so much quicker mm -hmm. than, you know, if you're playing a guitar or you're playing a flute or you're whatever else, where you're like, right, that sounds like a really interesting part of music theory that I haven't thought but about. Before. I think it's interesting though, is that sometimes it flips the other way. I remember a few years when we were doing Scope, Dan Powell and I, we decided to do a duo version of Two Lines in C. Right. And I did the whole thing on a sequencer, and the sequencer just couldn't handle okay. all the different measures at different times. The sequencer just wasn't able to do it. Yeah. So, and actually, it was quite hilarious how it could do. Well, I think that's really good. And, 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 and yeah. it's like the limitations made it into a piece, and we ended up calling it a piece about in C because, okay. because the terminology just couldn't play. Yeah. I think that's a really interesting point, though, because um, sometimes technology lets you do things that would be really hard as a, as a yeah. human. Sometimes technology, like, kind of forces you down anyways mm. and it makes it very difficult to sort of break out of how mm. it wants to be used so mm. there's a, I think with electronic music it's interesting like yeah. push and pull between is the technology actually making things easier for me or is the technology just like pushing me into a direction that yeah. everyone else is going in so yeah, yeah I think you have to be aware of that too. Mm. Mm. Anyway, does that bring us nicely to... I think it does, I think we've talked enough about finding fields, we found some fields there are lots of fields out there still to be found. So Chris has found a field. Yeah. Yeah, Chris has found a field. Um, so, uh, yeah, the next track is the last one on the album. Um, it's by Gunboiler. Um, and uh, Gunboiler is also Chris, who does the amazing visuals. Yeah. And uh, Midi Era. Yeah, uh, Midi Era does the incredible visuals at the Rossi Bar in the world. Um, so, how did Chris get involved in the Square Gravity? Um, well, he did so. Before Gunboiler, he did Midi Era. I think on Midi Era, um, uh, we tried to sing a couple of times. Um, I don't know where. Maybe be maybe the Open Sound Collective, which was a, a, a short-lived night of very interesting nerdy geekery, um, and um, he approached us. About, you know, again, he approached us to put on, to, to do stuff. Um, you know, Chris is very engaging, you know, as he did with Bang Shoot and everyone else. He will talk to you after the show, and you know, um, and he does, you know, he does his podcast, and there's all kinds of interesting things going on. And he just said he wanted to get involved, and um, so mm -hmm. we said, yeah, absolutely. I um, suppose for him, he can, you know, the, the generative visuals and stuff is probably something he could try out. Yeah. Well, 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 gravity, um, you know, well, well, initially, it, yeah. kind of initially he was looking after Electro Crush because yeah. um, Steve, right. uh, um, who used to look after Electro Crush for a long time, um, had a heart attack and uh, was unable to uh, come down anymore. Um, and so we needed someone to look after Electro Crush. And initially, you know, Chris said, um, you know, can I get involved? And I said, oh, I'll take over looking after Electro Crush. And he did that for a while. And he said, I've got these ideas, I want to do visuals, I've got these ideas, things I want to do. And so great, you know, um, because we seem to be going through a we seem to be going into a phase where there were more people with laptops turning up. It's very cyclic. You know, we, um, <laughs> we'd had an uh, you know, in the uh, in the mid two thousands there was a, a period where there was a lot of bull pen with laptops and it's mm. very dull. <laughs> uh, to watch, um, you know, you know, fascinating all kinds of different things you could do with a laptop, sound wise. But um, it's yeah, visually, <laughs> yeah, no. it's not a visual thing. It's not um, you know, apart from volume, you're not getting a lot from it live. So um, at, at that time, we had uh, an artist called uh, Bartosz Dzinski, who um, uh, many who uh, came down and said, oh, "I want to do visuals." 
and um, and Chris similarly at a perfect time. So they're going to do visuals of Wake Packs three. So that's this handoff. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, yes, absolutely. But you have no what I want to do is just really get on with it and trust you. Yeah. 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 Brilliant. Yeah. So, so that's yeah, the yeah. thing that the presenting did actually because it has, yeah, yeah. has has become part of the evening. Yeah, that thing makes a big difference. And I always try and when I'm recording the when I'm videoing the performers, I always try and make sure I get the yeah. visuals in as well because they're a massive part of it. But interesting if you're playing and people don't get to see. Yeah, yeah. It. yeah. <laughs> so everybody tells well, you how great the visuals are. Yeah. Have to say but then really. you can check them out on YouTube afterwards. Like, <laughs> yeah. If I remember to bring all the oh, It is quite funny going to have people turn around to look at what's going on the screen behind us. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Gunboiler is a relatively new thing. I think it started off as a duo with someone else and then he said, he, he, he pitched, well, I've got this idea, I want to start using stream templates. And uh, he said, yeah, sounds good. You know, because we've got, we've got a history with Gabba on the templates going back to the, kind of the very early days. Um, I briefly mentioned uh, Andy Collins being involved. We were achieved some notoriety shit that he was doing kind of Gabba template break cost stuff. Um, and he had kind of several iterations of that before, um, before we kind of settled on the, uh, what we came to know and love as Shitma. And we had, um, Shigei, who was, uh, DJ Scotch Egg, who was doing Game Boy Gabba, um, back in the mid 2000s as well. Uh, he, the first set he did with a Game Boy was, uh, um, Spirit Club, all day, I think, Goblin. Mm. Um, so yeah, we we got a, a stream template and kind of something we like to revisit from time to time. And so when Chris said he wanted to do this, I was like, yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's kind of strangely beautiful. <laughs> yeah, is it? Yeah. I think he's he's playing a, a cork electro, which is sample based groove box thing, and I think he's playing it at the maximum amount it's can yeah. go to. But at that speed, it goes so fast, it almost turns into a sort of shimmery drone type thing. It's, yeah. too, it's, too, it's definitely too fast to dance to, but I think it's almost too fast to even pop what the beat is. Well, yeah, yeah it's absolutely. Sort of like, it's like a sort of permanent sort of stutter. It's definitely a challenge. Yeah. It's yeah, definitely yeah. a challenge. The thing I was really happy about when, uh, when, um, when Gumball played at Spirit Gravity was that people rose to the challenge. Yeah, there was, like, go. <laughs> there was three or four people down the front going, Rah! I'm going to try to dance as fast as I possibly can. Yeah. Challenge accepted. Yeah. So that was good. Shouting faster. I think, <laughs> I, I think that might have been me. Yeah. I think that might have been me. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, Gumball, absolutely incredible live. I think I heard this track before I'd seen Gumball live right. because oh, right. Chris submitted this track for the compilation and I mastered it maybe before he played it Spirit Gravity. But yeah, if you ever get the chance to see Gumball Live, it is absolutely worth doing. It's a, yeah. uh, it will, um, you know, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a different it's formative aspe aspect to it as well. Yeah. He yeah. has a mask and a kind of fair thing going yeah. on, which you can see on, on the, the fabulous, yeah. Yeah. On the fabulous yeah. artwork by Hendrik. Um, um, and he has a kind of MIDI light setup as well. Yeah, that thing's yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. His custom lights. So. I thought it was funny that Chris does all the visuals for everyone else's Spirit Gravity, and then when he plays, he's like, right, no visuals, I've brought my own light show. <laughs> I'm not, I don't trust anyone else. I'm doing it all. <laughs> it's all me. Anyway, right, let's put it on, because, uh, yeah. Do you, know, do you know what? I've never, ever heard this loud enough. Well, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna turn the microphone off, but then once we play the turn, we, we can't. can't play the it's it's an we, we can we can turn it. We can't play the really. Can turn it off. <laughs> All right. So yeah, this is Gumboiler.
All right, you'll be very happy to hear that DJ Cheesemaster was jumping around like an idiot in my front room to that show. <laughs> and also, Not on camera. you may have missed it because it wasn't on camera, but I have got a picture which I'll post later on so you didn't completely miss it. Um, another fun anecdote about that track is that uh, when Chris gave it to me, um, uh, when we were putting the album together, he was like, good luck mastering that. Uh, so, but we've just turned it up in my living room and it sounded pretty good. So. Mm. Ha, we did it. <laughs> We did it, and the needle stayed in the groove. So, even with my leaping about, even with yeah, yeah. Jeff leaping about, yeah. So yeah, that's it. That is a poem in six bars. We got to the end. Thanks for joining us uh, on the stream again. Sorry for the earlier tech troubles we had. Um, here's the album. The amazing uh, artwork by Andrew. Everybody on the back. Um, incredible. I'm going to have to show you again. I have to get it out, even though I just put it away. <laughs> Um, incredible lathe cut transparent vinyl uh, that was made by Lathe to the Grave in Cardiff. Um, we've just proven to you that it all works, which I was a bit worried about because uh, it's the first time I've tried to master something for vinyl. But uh, yeah, it all works. The music plays. We've played it for you today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you have, then maybe come down to the Spirit of Gravity, which happens on the first Thursday of the month uh, at the Rossi Bar from eight o'clock. Um, you get to see Jeff with the uh, his famous wig on. Uh, you get to hear some amazing music. You get to find some new fields because uh, there's always incredible music going on. Um, see, um, see Chris's amazing visuals. Um, also, we are going to be doing more streams on Gravitons. Um, uh, <laughs> so check those out um, because the next one will be even better. Hey! hey.